Sanctic is by no means a simple game. Sure, it's about surviving and killing killers in Area 51, it's in the title of course, but in reality there's way more to the game than just that. And because I've been playing Sanctic more or less consistently for the last 7 years, naturally I've gained a lot of experience. So in this video I'm going to share with you all my most helpful tips and tricks that's going to help you survive. Because it turns out I'm kind of good at the game. Now not all of these tips and strategies were created by me, some of them I learned from other players in the community. Just wanted to put that out there since you can't actually copyright strategies in a video game. I would assume. Also, I'm not going to be covering how to get all of the badges in this video because quite frankly other people on YouTube have done a way better job than I ever could on that, and I reckon most of you more or less have all of the badges available in the game anyway, so whatever. No, in this video I'm going to be going over all of the Sanctic modes in order and showing you the absolute best strategies for either maxing out your stats or just how you can improve your skills. So hopefully you enjoy the game more, and maybe you'll learn something new along the way. I know I won't but that's because I'm making the video. But anyway, I think we've wasted enough time. Let's start with some general tips that you should be using no matter what mode you're playing. Firstly, let's talk about shift lock and inventory. People sometimes ask me what my settings look like in Sanctic. Honestly, I just stick to the default for the most part, but the two things that I have mapped to a custom key is both my inventory and shift lock buttons. I'm not 100% sure what inventory is mapped to by default. However, I have it mapped to the back tick button? Wow, I didn't even know that symbol had a name. But yeah, I have the inventory mapped to that button because I believe that's what it's mapped to in every other Roblox game, I'm pretty sure. It's just there for convenience. It also allows me to open my inventory while being attacked because that button in particular is very close to W, A, S, and D. This is just a personal preference though, just find something that works best for you. Probably should have mentioned this before talking about the inventory button, but shift lock is probably by far the most important key you should have mapped in the settings. I I have shift lock mapped to T at the moment, although I should probably change it to R since in the next Sanctic update whenever you press T the kills play their awful detect sounds and it's just really annoying. Shift lock is important because it basically locks your character with your mouse, allowing you to turn as if you are in first person. This helps a ton with aiming, well not even just aiming but turning in general. Shift lock has saved my life countless times and now sure there are some instances where you don't want shift lock like when you're teleporting with slender, but without shift lock enabled aiming with guns and attacking with melee kills becomes way harder. So next time you're in Sanctic, before you do anything, you should map your shift lock to, you know, whatever key you have access to that's near W, A, S, and D. I don't know how it works on mobile though, you'll have to tell me in the comments. Sensitivity, sensitivity, sensitivity. Now I don't really want to go on too long about this topic because sensitivity is all just a personal preference at the end of the day, but I have mine set to both halfway in Roblox's setting and in Sanctic settings. I'm going to be honest, I haven't really experienced experimented around with them too much to find something better for my playstyle. This is probably the default for all I know, I couldn't tell you. Oh yeah, almost forgot to mention, but something else that you can do with shift lock is that instead of going into first person, you can angle your camera near enough so that your character becomes translucent while aiming. Why would you do this? Well, I've heard that this not only helps a lot with aiming in certain weapons, but it also heavily decreases your recoil, allowing your shots to be more accurate. As if you don't know, recoil and guns decrease heavily while in third person compared to first person, and recoil is always something you don't want as it causes you to miss a lot of shots, wasting precious ammo. I don't use this method of aiming personally, mostly because I record videos and I just think it's very distracting and even disorientating to have my character constantly on the left side of the screen the entire time, but you know, the option is always there. Also, my avatar has giant wings, so that's kind of a problem. But now, let's actually get onto mode-specific tips and tricks. And, you know, tips for each individual mode. Because if you don't know, each mode within Sanctic functions very differently from one another, and I've given them their own separate section. Let's begin with, of course, Killer Mode. What's that, the viewers ask? What about Classic Mode? No, we're not covering Classic Mode. Or Boss Rush Mode. Or Kill House Mode or even storming mode, mostly because, you know, you, you play classic mode once, you get the badges, you never touch the mode again. You play boss rush mode once, get the badges, never touch the mode again. You play kill house mode once, get the badges, never touch the mode again. Play storming mode, okay, yeah, you get it, they're not very replayable. But anyway, my number one tip for any killer mode player, 
don't play killer mode. No, no, seriously, it's a trap. Don't do it. Okay, but for real, I'm only going to be focusing on tips for the killer side of things in this video. Since you know the only thing you have to do as a survivor is to buy all of the game passes, equip the zombie morph, equip the armor, pack a bunch of every gun in existence, and then lay the mode to waste. Now, unlike perhaps other modes within Sanctic, you're really going to want the killer choice game pass, or at least make it a top priority to buy it, because otherwise, grinding out survivor kills is going to be really slow and very inconsistent. That, or you're going to have to constantly reset every time you get a bad kill out of the randomizer, because a lot of killers you'll get are hot, hot trash from this mode and just aren't even worth using. But the killers that are worth using, oh, do they hit like a truck. Now, for convenience, I've divided the best killers up within killer mode into two categories, runners and farmers. Runners do exactly as they say. They're the fast boys that can easily catch up to survivors to do damage that usually adds up over time. Killers with this description could include Wendigo, Smile Dog, Sonic EXE, and a few others. But these are the main three fast killers in Sanctic that I would class as runners. In many ways, farmers are the opposite of runners. Usually these killers are slow, but tend to be very effective campers, and really help to grind out the survivor kills easily. Hence the name. Do you like my naming system, by the way? It took me 20 seconds to come up with. Unlike runners, I would say that there are a lot more killers that could act as farmers, since, you know, a lot of killers within Sanctic are just naturally slow. Slenderman, Alien, Chucky, Captain Zombie, Regular Zombie, Ghostface, and even Granny are all great farmers. Now, picking the correct class of killer depends on you as a player and what you want to get out of killer mode. If you just want free survivor points and like sitting in the first room, then pick a farmer killer. If you like going around and killing all of the super sweaty pack-a-punch ray gun 12 year olds, then pick a runner killer. Personally, I like to start off with a farmer killer like Alien to stop all of the survivors from dispersing out too much. Then when people start obtaining weapons, I'll usually switch to a runner killer like Wendigo to thin the survivor population further. Now, this strategy doesn't work for every single server, obviously. You know, some servers just have 10 ray gun spammers and there's not really too much you can do about that. The best thing you can do is just farm out the little survivor kills you can and, you know, just don't go in as a runner because you'll probably die 50 times over. There are also some specific strategies that I like to use for each individual killer. One pretty broken strategy is that you can summon Captain Zombie's minions within the bunker, and they'll float up to the spawn area on their own, usually giving you a few kills. The great thing about this strategy is that you don't risk yourself getting clapped, and killing Captain Zombie's minions don't actually award anything for the survivors, so it's not like you're giving people a ton of free kills. If you want to take this strategy a step further and have been in the same server for a while, what you can do is find the alien code while you're a survivor, become a killer as Captain Zombie, enter the alien code, jump into the alien room, and now you're basically untouchable, while you repeatedly summon zombies up here forever that drop down to kill survivors for you. It's probably the most free way ever to farm up kills in killer mode without doing anything, but it does require a bit more setup, so keep that in mind. I could go on all day about the various strategies that you could use as each individual killer, like how you can jump into the helpful kill event as Slender or Wendigo to hide, or how you can use Pinhead to teleport to the pack a munch area to screw over Game Pass users. And yeah, that's really about it for killer mode. There are loads of branching strategies that you can use for basically every killer. I mean, even killers like, I don't know, Michael Myers might have their own strategy. I don't know, I'm, I'm not using Michael Myers, but you know, our next mode that we're going to cover, Endless Survival, well, it's a lot more straightforward to say the least. As probably all of you know, the beginning of Endless Survival is fairly simple. You start in the spawn room and progressively unlock doors to enter new rooms. But what doors should you unlock? Well, I would only really recommend opening rooms that you really, really need to enter. As not only is it a giant waste of points opening doors that don't have anything behind, but some rooms have a chance to contain a barricade within it, offering a spot for more killers to potentially spawn. In Endless Survival, you always want to keep the number of barricades that killers can spawn at to an absolute minimum. If killers are coming from too many areas all at once, then it's pretty easy to get overwhelmed. So at the start of the game, what I would suggest, it doesn't matter if you have the MP5K starter to game pass or not, you should always stay in the first room until round 3 or 4. After that, normally what I'll do is open up a few rooms until I reach the mystery box. I'll use the mystery box once for 950 points so I have an extra backup weapon in case I run out of ammo. Sometimes you get lucky and get OP weapons right off the rip, but not always. Listen, you either gamble to get a good gun or buy the M4 trash, take your pick. 
Once I've gotten enough weapons to last me for a while, usually at this stage I'll turn on the power. Probably best to do this during round intermission though, as you can see the killers have already begun to escape. Turning on the power is basically required for any long term endless survival game. Sure it doesn't matter too much on the early rounds when you only have a few guns and not that many points, but if you want to get to round 50 then you really need to turn on the power as quick as possible because it just gives you so much good stuff. After you do turn on the power though, you unlock a multitude of really awesome stuff, like perks, the pack-a-punch machine, and even traps. Now a lot of new players often ask what perks they should be using in Endless Survival since you can only have three on at any given time. I'd say no matter what, you want the double tap perk, otherwise on later rounds it's just gonna take way too long to kill a single killer, even with guns like the ray gun. Next, I would say either go for quick revive or speed cola. If you're worried about dying, go for quick revive, as you can automatically revive yourself if you go down. Note that you can only buy quick revive three times though. Sorry, it's the law. If you're more worried about crowd control over dying, then go for speed cola, as it decreases your reload time. Speed cola can also be useful if you aren't using too many guns. After that, I would say go for the juggernaut perk no matter what, as the increase in your health definitely lets you take a lot more punishment, especially on higher rounds. You're even able to survive Slenderman's tentacle grab with juggernaut. Once you've gotten all of your desired perks, you're gonna want to focus on getting more points and buying more guns. A vital weapon that you're gonna want to get quickly would be the ray gun in the radioactive area, but you can also get it for super cheap through the mystery box. You're gonna be using this thing till the end of time, just letting you know now there's no getting out of it. Speaking of the mystery box, I know we used it once at the start of the game to get an extra gun, but try and avoid using it from now on until a killer drops a fire sale power up, as buying guns from the mystery box for full price is a massive gamble that can actually leave you broke. Plus, you might end up getting the teddy bear from it, which will move the mystery box to another location around the map, which is just annoying. And on top of that, it'll mess up an almost round skipping technique that I'll discuss later. A pretty cheesy strategy that a lot of players use throughout Endless Survival is that they'll leave one killer alive as to not end the current round, so that they can buy all of the guns they want without getting cornered and trapped in a room by a ton of killers. This strategy is also helpful for getting more ammo on a lot of guns anyway, so there's really no reason not to do it unless, you know, you have all of the guns in the game already. And in Endless Survival, you really want to focus on quantity over quality. As you know, the more guns you have, the better your chances of survival will be. At this point, you should also focus on pack-a-punching your guns, another reason not to dump your life savings into the mystery box. If you have it, the ray gun should be the first gun that you pack-a-punch, as, once again, it's going to be the gun that you're going to have to be using for the rest of the game. Like I said earlier, though, it's best not to just rely on one weapon. Other guns like the MG42, M16A2, the P90, and the AN94 all work wonders. But where do you actually sit and kill killers in Endless Survival? As the mode is all about crowd control, you're really gonna wanna sit in one area. Well, I'd say camping in the first cargo room where the mystery box can be found is probably the best place to sit for the first 40 or so rounds. I'd also suggest standing as close to the mystery box as possible, as to not let Slender teleport behind you. Once I hit round 40 or 50, I like going AFK in the tail stall or checkpoint area, as the killers around this stage become way too tanky for me to take them head on. Once all of the killers are stuck in this one spot, I like using my Pack-a-Punch Raygun splash damage to shoot through the glass, obliterating all of the killers. At this point in the game, this is the main loop that you're gonna have to follow. Kill all of the killers through the glass with a pack a bunch ray gun until you run out of ammo. Quickly dash past all of the killers and turn on the electrical trap leading to the long corridor. Bolt into the radioactive area as fast as you can, reload the ray gun, run around the whole cargo area and back to the tail stall safe room and repeat the process. Alternatively, if you followed my advice from earlier and only used the mystery box during fire sale rounds and it's still available, instead of camping in the tail stall room, you can hide behind the mystery box, turn on the electrical trap, and because the killers are incredibly dumb, they'll walk right into the thing, giving you easy kills without consuming any ammo. Once the electrical trap timer ends, you can then use your Pack-a-Punch Ray Gun to kill those who remain. You don't have to strictly follow these strategies past round 40 or 50 by the way, you could do these at any point in the game, I just find that they are a lot more helpful on the later rounds. And yeah, that's about it for Endless Survival. Now, unlike Killer Mode, there aren't loads of diverging paths that you can use for strategies in Endless, you know, there's only kind of like one road to the goal that goal being round gazillion. I, I don't know what your goal's in endless, but I would assume round 50, you know, there's not really too much reason to go to round 100 or something like that, unless you really want to flex, like me. But yeah, with endless survival out of the way, it's time to move on to a mode I'm very passionate about and very excited to share tips and tricks with you all. 
juggernaut mode. Now, unlike my killer mode tips and tricks, I'm actually going to be covering strategies for both teams within juggernaut mode. As unlike killer mode, there isn't a clear power division between both the survivors and the killers. Although, spoiler alert, survivors are still overpowered. Sorry, it's Sakduk. Speaking of survivors, let's start with those. Now, I'm not going to get into all of the gun locations or the proper routes that you should follow, as firstly, gun locations are pretty easy to memorize if you just play more games of juggernaut. And secondly, routes are mainly up to personal preference, at least in my opinion. You should probably just always go to the sewer, they have tons of gun locations there. No matter where you spawn in Juggernaut mode though, the first thing that you should do is look for guns. And I'd always recommend that you grab the very first gun you see, even if it's trash like the crossbow. This is because, typically in larger servers, guns usually get taken pretty quickly. And because you can only carry two weapons per round, well okay, technically three if you include the M1911, but whatever, it's always good to have at least one extra gun on you at all times. Even even if it's terrible. For my second gun, I usually like to be a bit more picky. For example, say the first gun I find is an M14. Not really a super amazing weapon, but I'll grab it anyway. Then let's say I come across an R870. Again, not really a good gun. So what I'll probably do is skip past the R870 and look for another weapon to save my gun slot for something much better. Now don't get me wrong, the M1911 is fine. In fact, I've heard from some players that they consider the M1911 to be like one of the best guns in the entirety of Juggernaut. I'll never understand that logic, but the main problem I have with the M1911 is that it runs out of ammo really quickly. And usually in 1v1 situations, I like having an extra gun on me just so I don't run out of ammo. You get it. Of course, it's entirely up to you what guns you take and leave. However, weapons I would say that you should always grab would be the ray gun, obviously, the SVD, DB shotgun, and M1014. All of these weapons do a ludicrous amount of damage close range, to the point where they're actually broken. Close range guns are really the best in Juggernaut mode, because you're always going to be close to the Juggernaut when you're doing the most amount of damage. Now I'm not going to go through all of the other weapons in Juggernaut mode, but I'll leave a tier list on screen if you want to find out what guns are better than others. Again, my opinion, and this only applies to Juggernaut mode. A lot of people seem to be divided on whether or not you should pack a bunch of weapons within Juggernaut mode, and I'd actually say that's a giant waste of points because rounds are usually over pretty quickly in Juggernaut mode. Even if you spawn near the Pack-a-Punch machine right off the bat, it's still going to take a while for you to receive your powered up weapon, meaning those points you spent are probably going to be long lost into the void. Like, even if you die during a Juggernaut round without a Pack-a-Punch weapon, at least you're not losing any points, you're just not gaining any either. However, of course, you do actually need to pack a bunch of weapon to get one of the badges in Juggernaut, I think it's Dominator, I think, I think that's what it's called, Dominator, that's what you need to uh, pack a bunch of weapon to get that, and I guess you could theoretically say that you need to pack a bunch of guns just for that badge, but that's kind of a one-time thing. And like I said earlier, I'm not including badges in this video, so um, don't be smart in the comments, I can see you. I'd also recommend using shift lock, like I mentioned earlier, to utilize third person to get a better view of your surroundings. This can be helpful for looking around corners in order to not get ambushed by the juggernaut, but doing this can also be beneficial in seeing gun locations from a distance, without wasting your time to go and check. Another tip I would give is to try and get into a large open area if the juggernaut is chasing you, because trust me, fighting in a wide open room with lots of space to move around is way easier than fighting close range in a corridor. Also don't forget social distancing. Okay, so I have loads more tips written down in this script and honestly I just really want to move on with this video, so I'm just going to say one sentence about every last piece of advice that I have for survivors in juggernaut mode. Listen out for specific killer cues like Slenderman's theme and Leatherface's chainsaw. This will help you identify the killer. If the juggernaut is camping, just wait for them. If they run out of time, they won't get any points. They have something to lose. You don't. Memorize juggernaut spawn locations so that you can find AFK juggernaut players more easily. Only use the energy drink when you really, really need it. Don't kill Captain Zombie's minions. Trap them in a room instead, so the juggernaut can't summon any more of them. If you hear large amounts of shooting coming from one area of the map unless you don't have a gun, stop whatever you're doing and dash over there immediately. And finally, don't trap yourself in the sonic room like I did. <gasps> And now we move on to the tips for the Devil's Advocate, or by its more boring name, the Juggernaut. 
Now, unlike killer modes, you don't actually need killer choice to do well as the Juggernaut. Of course, some killers are better than others, but I've actually had rounds where I've gotten at a pretty terrible killer, but still performed exceptionally well within it. Juggernaut is much more of a skill-oriented role, and there are a lot of people who play it totally incorrectly, even if they pick a good killer. You see this man here? He's getting pretty overwhelmed by all of the survivors at once, and that's because you really don't want to rush in a big crowd, as most of the time you're just going to be end up cornered and oh look they're already dead. What you really want to do as Juggernaut is take your sweet sweet time killing all of the survivors, as every single Juggernaut round is 7 minutes and actually you'd be surprised on what you can do in that time. What you want to do is start by picking off any alone players that you come across first. Doesn't matter who they are, just make sure they're all by themselves, so there are no witnesses. Sometimes you get lucky and find the top player on the server right away, and at the very least if you don't deal with them right then and there, you can use up one or two of their energy drinks. If you ever see a pack of four or more players, especially if it's early into the round, it's a good idea not to engage them. Remember, even if you're Juggernaut, you're still very fragile. If you give them a minute, they'll split up, and you can kill them by ambushing them behind a door or something. Of course though, this doesn't always happen, and about once per Juggernaut game, you're gonna be forced to fight multiple people at once. So how do you deal with this? Well, it's simple, always go for the most powerful player, and you should not stop going for them until they're dead. This could be a player with a powerful weapon, a player with a ton of points, or, you know, a YouTuber. Another very common thing that I see Juggernauts do is camp. This could be in the radioactive area and the mineshaft elevator, doesn't really matter. It's a terrible idea. The reason why is that once you're camping there, it's really difficult to run away when you have like 15 guys waiting outside that location. Sure, you might get a couple of kills, but eventually all the damage that you've taken thus far is gonna add up. Instead of camping, simply run away, and don't stop running until you lose all of the survivors. Then sit in a corner somewhere and reevaluate your life choices. Then go back to slaughtering. Of course though, being the Juggernaut isn't just based on strategy. Like I touched on earlier, there are some killers that are better than others, and the Juggernaut meta is constantly changing. One very popular killer that you might see a lot of Game Pass players use is Leatherface. This is mostly due to the fact that Leatherface not only outputs a high amount of damage, but has a secret hidden ability that whenever he deals damage to a player, he gains a small amount of health. Now of course, no matter what killer you are as Juggernaut, whenever you kill a player, you gain an additional 20 HP. However, that's only when you kill a player. Leatherface can gain health by simply doing damage, and that, for some, is a good enough reason to use him as Juggernaut. If they take a ton of damage, they can heal some of it back up pretty quickly. However, in my opinion, there are a few issues I have with Leatherface, and actually, I wouldn't consider him to be the best Juggernaut in the game. For one, Leatherface makes a lot of noise, meaning stealth is not really an option when using him. Most of the time, you just gotta take the risk and run in there. And secondly, he only deals big damage if you're really, really close to someone, which can be difficult if your opponent is bouncing around all over the damn place. So yeah, he's not a bad killer by any means, he definitely has his pros and cons, and there are a lot of other killers that function this same way, like Alien, he has his pros and cons, Pinhead, although in the next update he's going to become trash with this new ability. Sorry Pinhead fans, and I've even heard some people say that Jack Torrance is the best killer. Yeah, there's some crazy people out there. But in my opinion, the very best killer for Juggernaut mode has to be, once again, Captain Zombie. Yeah, he's about the only killer in the game who's broken for both PvP modes, but I'm not the one who made that decision. The main reason why Captain Zombie is so great is, again, because of his zombie minions. In Juggernaut mode, they're incredibly tanky and fast. It's essentially like having three Juggernauts on your side. You can make them do all of the work. Of course, this strategy isn't foolproof. Like I mentioned earlier, the survivors can still technically trap the zombies in a room so you can't summon any new ones, but I guarantee you 9 games out of 10, they'll just kill the zombies instead. Plus, even without the zombie minions, Captain Zombie himself does a ton of damage. Does it have Leatherface's healing ability? Well, no, but still. Of course, Captain Zombie doesn't instantly make you immortal as soon as you become him. You can still very much die if the survivors know what they're doing. But the same could be said about any Juggernaut, really. Even Leatherface. 
Juggernaut is a very difficult role to play, and you're not going to win every game. I mean, look at my win ratio. It's only just about above 70%, and I'm a decent player at Sanctic. Or, you know, I'd like to think so anyway. But, uh, yeah, I think that's about it for this tips video. I don't usually do tutorials often. I mean, it's not really a tutorial, it's just kind of tips and tricks on Sanctic. But, yeah, I actually had a lot of fun with this video. And now that you've made it to the end, maybe, you know, drop a comment down below to help other people with Sanctic and maybe share some of the tips you have. They might appreciate it. I mean, I hope so. I know a lot of you probably don't play Sanctic consistently on a daily basis or even a weekly basis. Maybe you just came back after, like, five years and now you're just finding out about Sanctic again. I mean, I know I won't enjoy Sanctic again because I've given permission to target me in-game. So that's just... Do you hear that? Sounds, sounds like Leatherface is the Juggernaut again, alright. I'll be right back.